Hi, everyone. I'll try to get my best French accent for you. Um, so something really happened when I prepared that speech. Um, I'm an engineer originally. Um, I tend to look at things. Uh, I'm an entrepreneur. I tend to look at the future. Um, sometimes I think I might be a robot. I never look at myself, and I never think of the past. So Arnaud asked me to do just that. Um, try to connect my story in AI with what happened in my life and my personality. So thanks, everyone, for making that possible. Thank you, Arnaud, for that impromptu, serendipitous, in, you know, introspect uh, journey that you offered me there. So the first thing I realized doing that work was that I've been really obsessed for the past 15 years about making our environment more aware of humans. Um, I dream of a world where our, the physical world, our environment, can understand our movement, our actions, our intentions, uh, our feelings, um, and can adapt to that. And also give us hints and advice on how to make our lives more comfortable, safer, healthier, easier. So some people are fascinated by, you know, space travel, um, robots. Um, you know, eternal life. I'm really obsessed and passionate about ambient intelligence. That's how we call that. So when I started my last company, Place Meter, I wanted to start with cities. I make cities more human-centric. So we built that smart little sensor that was able to detect, understand, count people, vehicles, bicycles, everything that moves in a city. It was inexpensive and designed to be deployed at scale so that if you're the Department of Transportation in New York, for example, you can really measure the impact of whatever road change you're making or making a, a, um, a sidewalk wider, does it really make pedestrians safer or not? If you're a retailer, you could, in real time, understand wait time at the, cashier, at the cash register and send more staff to keep the weight low uh, and keep your customers happy. Um, if you're an advertiser, you could understand and count how many people see your billboard, the ad you put on that billboard. Theoretically, we could also tell you that people looked at your billboard and went to buy the product. We never went that far. Um, but we really had the impression we were making CDs smarter. Um, then, December 1st, 2016, big day for me, uh, my uh, second company was acquired. We got acquired by Arlo. Arlo is the uh, leader in home security cameras. So that's a great opportunity. Today, me and my team, we're bringing ambient intelligence to your homes. At Arlo, we have close to 12 million cameras in our customers' um, homes. Um, our customers use the cameras to keep an eye on what they have, you know, on the dearest things. You know, their uh, children, their pets, sometimes it's the other way around, um, their belongings, and uh, we help make these cameras smarter. We bring AI, computer vision, so that we can tell you if somebody you don't know, a stranger, is roaming on your backyard. Uh, we can tell you if your child hasn't come back from school at the usual time. We can tell you if the fire alarm has gone off and you might want to take a look at what's going on and call 911. But the next frontier, the next frontier, I think, is health. The Apple Watch today has a FDA-approved EKG. Apple Watch already saved life by sending people to the hospital when they detect you know, unusual cardiac patterns. Um, there's a fascinating lab at MIT run by Dina Katabi. You should watch her TED Talk. It's amazing. She built a little device that can measure um, vital signs, heart rates, you know, breathing rates, um, some indication of blood pressure without any contact, just put it in a corner somewhere. It's going to track your health. It's amazing. But why not go even further than that? Your environment can understand, you know, if you're angry, if you're in pain, if you're happy by listening to what's happening, looking at your motion, and by analyzing all these signals, you can, you know, the right neural networks can detect very small invisible variations of these patterns and detect very early signs of disease. And then, you know, maybe avoid that disease and maybe, you know, keep it from happening. So ambient, in, uh, ambient intelligent health will become preventive and really prevent diseases from happening. Um, so, of course, there's a flip side to that. 
um, privacy, right? Um, I don't want that kind of data in the hands of my insurance company, health insurance company, or my employer, uh, or my bank, right? Um, also, you know, knowing you have a disease is something, but you know, what you decide to do with it has to stay um, a personal decision. Fortunately, cryptography has made tremendous progress in the past five, 10 years. And now you can really imagine a structure where the data is distributed, unhackable, and com constantly in control. Uh, you, you would constantly be in control of it. So, uh, so there's a silver lining to that. So all through that process of preparing that speech, I was wondering, man, why? Why am I so interested in ambient intelligence? And then it struck me, you know, it's so obvious, but it struck me at that point, I'd never seen it. But let me tell you a story of my mother, um, or rather a sad story of how she died. Um, you know, losing a mother is a pretty traumatic event, and I think it, it affected me more than I thought. Um, my mother was amazing. Um, she was, uh, you know, the sunshine of my life. And at the end of her life, she always had migraines. At the end of her life, she had different kinds of migraines. Everybody noticed a change of pattern. Then one day, she went to sleep, and she never woke up. She died of an aneurysm. So an aneurysm is a blood vessel that bursts in the brain. If that happens during the day. People notice changes, behavioral changes. They take you to the hospital. You get fixed, and survival rate is pretty high. If it happens at night, nobody notices, and you die in your sleep. So I will succeed if I make you know, these next generation health sensors that will maybe one day save somebody's mothers. Thank you. <laughs>